Welcome to another post-processing tutorial. Today I want to show you the, for me, easiest and cleanest way to do exposure blending in Photoshop. And we'll be working on this photo here. So this is already the final image. And I used four exposures to recreate the dynamic range of the scene. And then I had another exposure for the wave action here. And let's just head over to Lightroom so I can show you the photos. So what I have here is I have a very bright exposure, which is three seconds. And I took this one to have all the detail here in the bushes and in the rocks. So I'm not losing any details, which you can see here, there's enough space. And then I have three bracketed exposures, which I have basically to get in all the detail in the sky and also here in the beach. So the bright exposure here would normally be a little bit too dark. So I'm still losing a bit of details here in the dark tones. But for this reason, I have this additional exposure. So both three uh, images are basically to recreate all the dynamic range in the sky. And then I have an, an additional image here, which I'm going to be using for the waves. So what I normally do if I have such exposures and want to blend those, I first apply some highlights and dark tones or shadows. So I bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, and I basically do this for all the exposures. This is just a basic setting I do. And I might do a little bit more here for the bright one. And what I also do, I try to yeah, bring the exposures a little closer together. So brightening up the dark exposure a bit so it gets closer to this one and makes the blend more easy. But what I've been doing recently is not just bringing it closer together, but making it equal. So basically this exposure, this normal exposure and this bright one, there are two stops between those. So what I do, I just brighten these two stops so now the brightness is the same and what I can do, I bring down the lights a bit because I brought up the um, exposure so much. So basically those two should look the same in brightness. And for this very dark one, I bring it up four stops, which is overkill for my Canon because if you look closely, you see lots of noise here in the dark tones. But what you'll also notice here in the bright tones there's no noise at all and that's what's important for the blending. So here the focus is just to get the exposures even in terms of brightness. So let's bring this down a bit so I get all the details. So for this dark exposure I can bring down the highlights very much so this sun area looks very good and I can ignore all these dark areas and all the noise. And here for this very bright one I have to dial down the exposure three stops and yeah this again this looks horrible here for the sky but I don't care very much because I'll just be using it for this darker area and I can bring up here the dark tones very much because of the exposure I brought down before and also the black point so basically creating the space here again which was there in the beginning and let's look at this one. So this one is basically the same exposure at 0.3 seconds, same as this one. So now I have all the exposures. They all have the same brightness. And now I show you how to blend those. So I opened up all the images as layers in Photoshop and I've already named them. So we have the zero, the normal exposure, the plus two, the minus two, and also the plus five, a very bright one. And down here, the water exposure, which we'll use later. But let's just start with those three. So how do I blend those? And I'll be now using luminosity masks again. And if you aren't familiar with luminosity masks yet, I recommend you to watch my other tutorial. So you'll see an eye popping up on the upper right now. And in this tutorial, I explain what luminosity masks are and how to create them. But I'll be using a plugin to create the luminosity masks, which is called Lumensia. 
And yeah, it's not mandatory, so you can either create them your own after watching my tutorial, or you can use Tony Kuiper's Actions Panel, which is very popular. But I'll be using Lumenzia and I'll leave a link in the description below. And what I want to do now, let's first put a mask on this bright exposure here, this plus two EV. And I want a selection for the bright tones and let's just try the lights three. And now I get a preview and this is a very good selection because the rocks are black, which means basically that I want um, affect those areas. So I create a selection from this. Control H hides the selection and now I paint with a black brush to reveal the layer beneath. So basically I want to reveal this layer, but only here in the bright tones. And since I have adjusted the exposures of all the, expo uh, of all the images, so they are basically equal, I can just use like 100% and paint this in here and it will just fit, it will just look good. And also I don't have to worry that I'll be painting across those dark rocks because the mask prevents it. So this is very easy to get, an, get a very even blend here. And another beautiful thing is if we look closely, although it was not much wind this morning, there's a little bit of movement here in those palm trees and a normal blend using the luminosity mask will not work because I'll have uh, yeah, some artifacts or some shadows of the different exposures. And for this here, I just go with like 100% black without any mask and paint in completely into the mask. So I reveal the zero EV exposure. And for such smaller areas, typically edges or leaves, this is totally fine. I won't introduce too much noise there. So, and I can even apply some noise reduction. So just making sure I have a blend which hasn't any yeah, shadows of moving palm trees. And yeah, this works so nicely because I compensated the exposure before. So before and after. And we'll do the same for the very bright area of the sun. I'll just group those two, put a mask onto the group, and now I use Lumenzia again and select the very bright areas. And press select. Hide the mask, use a black brush, and let's zoom in a bit. And I go with like 50 to get a convincing result. And yeah, paint in the area of the sun and Again, since the exposures are already compensated, this is very easy and clean. And I don't have to worry to introduce any of the noise which you have here, because by using the luminosity masks, I can't paint over those areas. So that's a very clean way and easy way of blending those exposures. And let's also bring in the bright one. I'll first put a black mask onto this, holding down Alt. Oh, first I should have deselected. Okay. Now we have the black mask. And here, I won't even bother to use the luminosity mask. I'll just use white 100% and paint in those areas. And for the edges, I can use Lumenzia. Get a dark mask, maybe a little more. Well, I can refine it a bit, so using the levels to make sure I get a clean edge here, so I'm not selecting any of the sky. Bring up the bright one. And now I select. Hide the mask. And then with a white brush again, I paint in some of the details. And yeah, that's a very easy approach. and. Let's just see again. This was, uh, let's remove this. Basically, let me just show you the before. I'll just copy this. So this was the before and this is the after. So I now have a very good starting point here and the blending was very easy because 
I compensated the exposures completely. So I didn't just bring them closer together as I normally do. I just made them completely equal in terms of exposure. And this will also work very nicely for architecture. For example, if you're shooting in the night and you have windows where there's light inside the buildings, this is normally very hard to blend. And even with luminosity masks, you don't get it right. But if you do this approach, you should get very nice results. So let's finish this up. Let's put a group around those and a mask. And I said, now, oh, again, deselect the mask. I always seem to forget it. So let's now bring in the water because I said I wanted to have this wave rolling in. So I just use a black brush. I'm not using any mask, just painting in this lower portion here. And I use a soft brush so I get a, a clean blend here. Get some of the splashes. Yeah, and that's basically it. That's the blend and yeah, it was very easy. And from now, from here, it's my normal workflow. I now typically flatten the image, select everything and control E. And from there, let's head over. It's basically the base to which I applied some transformations. I did some cropping and then did all my typical workflow, which you, if you're interested, can buy or can see in my in-depth tutorials which are available on my homepage and there's a link in the description below and you really get every detail of my workflow there so it's like in a total I, I think six or seven hours of tutorials where you learn everything from start to finish. So I hope you liked this little tutorial. If so please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe and comment if you want to learn more and have suggestions. Bye!